Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belongeth to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahabashai, Bahasham, Wahavakak Wadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahabashai, who we reverence. And double honour to the elder apostles of great millstone that teach us truth well and that continue that continue to teach us truth well and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few brothers and sisters listening and also learning across the globe. Okay. This lesson is going to be based on the Holy Spirit. Because there's a lot of um Mis mis misconceptions and <laughs> to the brothers that are in the spirit you can relate you're going to be able to understand this ain't going to be of hard understanding so lord willing this to be edifying i want to start off on john 14 and jump straight to verse 26 but the comforter and it's not talking about that Big black buffalo, okay. That was what extorting people, okay, taking their money, okay. The comforter is the Holy Spirit, okay, which is the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit is a comforter for us. The only how we can get get through anything we get through is through Yahweh Shai, whom the Father will I send in my name, whom the Father will send in my name, Yahweh Shai's name, okay. And knowing that name is a comfort in, in itself, but also believing that name. So to have the Holy Spirit, first of all, you have to have faith. So if you don't have faith, then how is one going to be granted the Holy Spirit? He shall teach you all things. So the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. Does this mean you don't have to be taught by men? You still have to be taught by men, but he sends you the Holy Spirit. Is that what inspires us? Is that what keeps us going? And bring all things to your remembrance. That's how we're able to understand what we forgot. But now we understand it. Because the Holy Spirit has brought it to our attention, to our remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Okay, peace I leave with you and my peace I give unto you. This Yahweh shall speak and not as the world giveth. Because this world's very fake. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Okay, so you shouldn't be you sh should be in a time you shouldn't be afraid, you shouldn't be worried because we already have what the gift, the gift of prophecy, the Holy Spirit. Okay, and we're also going to talk about the flesh as well. But let's go to Second Peter's one and twenty one, Baba Kasha. And a man that can talk about the Holy Spirit is because he's in the Holy Spirit. Okay, he's not in well, he's in. The spirit, even though he's in the world, but he's in the spirit while he's in the world. Because some are just in the world, but they're not in the spirit. If that's making sense, Baba Kasha. Oh man, so bear me just a minute and I hope this is edifying. You know I do these lessons, not just for myself, to build up brothers and new sisters that are listening and learning. Okay. Because we don't come into this truth, right? We build ourselves up. But once we build ourselves up, it's also to build up the Akiyam as well. Let's go into 2 Peter 1 and 21, Baba Kasha. For the prophecy... Bear me just a minute. Let me start it. For the prophecy came not in old time. Okay. But by the will of man. So some men say, oh, who wrote that? Who, who, who wrote that? I don't believe in that. A lot, of, a lot of our people have that mentality. But it says, by the will of man. Okay, because certain men say, oh no, he's willing himself, but here it is, holy men, so these men were holy, they were sanctified, they were separated, and that's why when you're in this truth, eventually, you can't become, uh, what's the word, what's the word, what's the word, somewhat iso isolated from the world, because you're holy, your house needs to make you holy, and how does he do that? By separating you from the people of this world, that's why... The men of the Lord, they have nothing in common with the people of this world. You may like some boxing or whatever, eat, drinking, cooking. But in terms of having things in common to the standards of this world, no, we have nothing in common. 
So that's why we receive what a lot of hate. But holy men of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So remember what we said upon John 14. We was talking about what the Holy Spirit, which was what we received, given unto us three, how shall the Comforter, which I will send in my name, in my Father's name. But holy men of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So it's the Holy Spirit that moves you to be on fire. It's the Holy Spirit that moves you to do these lessons. It's the Holy Spirit that moves you to fast. It's the Holy Spirit that moves you to go out into the highways and byways, to go out at camp. It's not of, this is not of your own will. It's not of our own will. Because if you're if you're not moved by the Holy Spirit, you would not be able to do you would not be able to do none of these things. And with that comes what great humility. Great humility. Bear me just a minute. So now we go to John. We're gonna go straight to John. And bear me just a minute. Get some main points. So now you can add, now we're gonna get into the battle. What is the battle? Because if you come to the truth and you don't realize what you're battling, then ultimately you're just it's gonna to lead to you what to, to fail, to fall. The first battle is ourselves. Okay, but before we go into let's go into John 8. You know what? We shut up on that last Baba Kashar. Let's go into Romans 6 and 16. Likewise, reckon ye also. Let me just a minute. Read it out of the scriptures and just a minute. Let me just Romans 6 and 11. Okay, you know what? Let's start at. There's a lot of good meat here. There's a lot of good meat. Let's start at Romans 6 and 6. Knowing this, that our, our, our old man is crucified with him. So, the moment you wake up in the truth, the old man is crucified with Yahweh Shai. X'd out. So that would mean you become a new man in Yahweh Shai. Okay? And the body of sin might be destroyed. Through what? Through Yahweh Shai. Not by your own means. Not by you keeping um, all these different laws. It's not by that. And that if we head forth, bear me just a minute. And that we head forth, we should not serve sin. Why? Because you're in Yahweh Shai. Because guess what? Brothers, sin. Unknowingly. So when it says we should not serve sin, why? Because you're in Yahweh Shai. So if you're in Yahweh Shai, you're not serving sin. Because you're in the spirit. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Okay. Now if we be dead with Mashiach, we believe that we shall also live with him. Okay? So if we're dead with Mashiach, that means we're dead to this world. That means you're no longer in the flesh. You're in the spirit. Because your old man is died. Your old man has been what? Crucified. But you're alive in your house shy. Knowing that Mashiach being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no dominion over him. Because he conquered death. Because he was perfect. That's why the scripture says, Mark the perfect man. And he was the perfect man, Yahweh Shai. Okay? Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be deed in dead, indeed, dead indeed unto sin. So the man of the Lord, dead dead unto sin. And even when they do sins, their sins are not imputed unto him, but alive unto the Most High through Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Let not sin therefore reign. So why, if it says you're dead to sin, why is it saying let not your let not sin therefore reign? Because we sin. But the difference between those in the world and those that have received the truth and those that are of the elect, their sin is going to be like they've never they never sinned. Therefore, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Okay? In other words, take hold of you. And what's mortal? Goes back to what? Mortality, death. And what brings death? Sin. So this was a letter unto the Romans through Paul saying, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Okay? 
that you should obey it in the lust thereof because what the flesh warreth against what the spirit why because you have a mortal body so if you have a mortal body but your spirit is your spirit is upright your flesh is going to try to be what take you the other way okay verse 30 neither yield yield means to bring forth ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness okay unto sin because the members which is of your flesh it wants to do opposite of the spirit so what would that lead to unrighteousness which would lead to sin but you yourselves unto the most high so if you're um bringing forth things to the most high doing the work what you're yielding yourselves unto the most high as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto the most high and romans in 12 what does it say offer your body as a living sacrifice so you part of doing that what are you doing? You're yielding your body, what, unto righteousness. If you're stagnant, you're lukewarm, you're going two, five days, you're yielding your members to what? To unrighteousness. Because when men read the scripture, you know the first thing they think of? Lust. And lust can be you not, not doing the work. Lust can you just be you sitting there, eating, drinking, going to clubs, committing adultery. These are all lusts within your members. Okay? For sin you shall not have dominion over you, for ye are under the law, for ye not for ye are not under law, but under grace. Does this mean we don't keep the law? No, if that mean it, it, it means you're not held to all to all the law. Because if that was the case, you wouldn't need to have a shrine. Because we are still under the law. But in terms of having to try and to fulfill all the laws. You're not under it, but under grace. Right now, a grace period is a mercy period. Time to get right. Okay, that's that grace. And the scripture says, use not your grace as a cloak of maliciousness. The scriptures tell you that. And this is what men are doing. So, is your house going to have mercy upon someone that's using their grace as a cloak of maliciousness? As a disguise of maliciousness? The answer is no. Because you're taking advantage of what your grace pep, you're not trying to get right. Casting off that nigger. And elder apostles are, um, the elder apostles are right, you still got a lot of niggers in the truth, hiding behind camps, not even making an effort to change, not even striving. But it's all right, because Yahweh is going to weed them out. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, so do you just go ahead and sin? Because you're not under all the law. No. You still make a conscious effort to keep the law. But under grace, most high forbid. In other words, no. Okay. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey his servants. Ye are to bear me just a minute. To whom ye obey, wherefore of sin unto death or and obedience unto righteousness. Bear me just a minute. But 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 the most high be thanked that ye were servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine which is was delivered unto you. Being that made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Okay. So now, guess what? We're servants of righteousness. In the world, we were servants to sin. But now you've learned of Yahawashai. Now you're in Yahawashai. We're no longer servants to sin. We're servants of the Spirit. So guess what? If you haven't been given the faith, to believe in Yahweh Shai, you're still a servant to sin. Okay. Galatians 5 and 17. Baba Kasha. And I hope this is edifying because a lot of individuals they don't really they're not really bringing this out. So they have you um they have you messed up in the spirit. If you go off Brothers, we'll, have, we'll try to have you mess up in the spirit, but that's, that's what I'm saying. That I will only work with guys that are not spiritually sound. But if you understand the scriptures, nobody... um, When you go off in the flesh, nobody can say, Oh, you, you're going to die now. No, but we warn you. That's what repentance is about. Because there's a difference between... I've always said this. There's a difference between going off and repenting and just being upright wicked. That's why the scripture says, use not your what your um 
your grace as a cloak of maliciousness. Let's quickly go to Galatians 5 and 17. There's a lot here. There's a lot. Give me just a minute. Let's start at 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why? Because you're in the spirit. You're in the spirit. You're walking in the spirit. You're doing the things pertaining to the spirit. A Christian will read this. Oh, just walk. Let me just, let me just walk. Oh, I'm in the spirit now. No, walk in the spirit. That means you are doing things to be in the spirit. Okay? And you had faith. And you were doing things pertaining to the spirit. Studying. And so forth. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So if you're walking in the spirit, it's impossible for you to be in the flesh. There's no such thing as being in... You're, you're in the spirit, but you're in the flesh. In terms of... You're in the, you're in the flesh as, is, as the flesh is what... Um, a, a temple, a covering for your spirit. So if you're walking in the spirit, you're not going to fulfill any lust of the flesh, especially envy. Envy is a lust of the flesh. Scoffing is a lust of the flesh. So when people think of lust, they think looking at a big booty women. No. No. Anything your flesh is lust, lusting after, which is outside of this truth. Okay. That, that, that is counted as what? You being in the flesh. Hating a brother for no cause. That's of the flesh. That's your flesh. Jealousy. That's your flesh. Okay. For the flesh lust, lusteth against the spirit. So it's lusting. It's fighting against the spirit. It wants to do opposite, it wants to do contrary, and that's what Satan operates on, your flesh. So when individuals say, oh, you know, I just can't be bothered, I'm going to wait until the spirit um, jumps upon me. You can't always be in that scenario. Okay, you have to push yourself. The scripture says, what, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. So the flesh lusts up against the spirit, because your flesh will tell you all day long, just sit down, sit down on the couch, go to work, sit down on the couch, just watch videos. That's, that's not necessarily you being in the spirit. You're still in the flesh. You could still be watching videos of the truth and you could still be in the flesh. You understand what I'm saying? You could even be doing videos and still be in the flesh because you didn't really study. You ain't fasted, you ain't put off the flesh. And that's how I always weigh it. I always weigh this in the balance. What was I doing? When you rest your head, you got at the end of the night, you always got to ask yourself, who won today? Was it the spirit or was it the flesh? Was I doing more things in the flesh than the spirit? Because if you've gone two days, four days, five days, no fasting, no praying, no nothing, and you just pop up on the scene, that means you're in the flesh. You're not in the spirit. This is what I'm trying to get men to understand. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, opposite, the one to, to another, to a other. That's why we need what the new covenant comes in. Because when the new covenant comes in, there ain't going to be no battling against the flesh. This is the condition of the battle. Because if you were perfect, then there would be no need for the new covenant. And these are contrary one to another so that you cannot do the things that you would, the things that you want to. Because if it was up to us, we'd be in the spirit 24-7. And as much as I do a lot of videos, I'm not in the spirit 24-7, but I would strive to be in the spirit. I don't know what it's like to be in the spirit. It's the best feeling in the world. The best feeling in the world. But us being in the mortal bodies, we're not going to be in the what? The spirit 24-7. That's why we have to fight. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Because you're doing the things that are pertaining to the law because you're in the spirit. So you're not going off. If, if you're in the spirit, how, you, you, you're not under the law because you're doing the things that are pertaining to the law because you're in the spirit. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. So it's going to let us know what these things are. Which are these? Adultery, 
do know you wanting to sleep with another man's woman, okay, that is of the flesh. And why would you want to even do that anyway? Because men that do that, that's another man's property. You do know that woman that laid down with the other man, the, the husband. His spirit is on that woman. So why would you want to sleep with another man's woman? Because you may, you may say flamer, sodomy, but you're as worse as a sodomite if you commit adultery, don't you? This is what you've got to understand. You're as worse as, as a sodomite. You're popping another... It's like, that's like you popping another man. But if you're not spiritual, you're not going to see it that way. Fornication. And fornication is spiritually. Idolism going into different gods. Which is that, that's another form of what idolatry... Uh, uh, what's it? Adultery. Uncleanness. Okay. You know what that is. That LGBT madness. Which is uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Okay. And bear me just a minute. Just a minute. Hold on right there. Quickly go to these words. Okay. Excuse me, just a minute. Okay. Wantonness. Spare me just a minute. Go into this with lasciviousness. Type it in. Strong's G seven sixty six. As Elgaya. As Elgaya. As Elgaya. As Elgaya. Unbri unbridled lust. So that means you're not temperate. The scriptures talk about being temperate. Okay. Excess. This ties in with many things. A lot of men just associate this with women. This also ties in with what? Rank. You may be um, seeking to take, you want somebody else's rank. Just like Abarim Korah. I must have forgot the other name. Okay. Unbridled lust. No control. Excess. Okay. You're overindulging in whatever it may be. Wine, drink, women. Whatever you put too much time in, which is not the truth. Which is not pertaining to the truth. Licentiousness, lavishness, wantonness. That ties in with adultery. And that's, that can also tie in with wanting someone's rank or popularity. That's all of the first. Outrageness. You're outrageous. Shamelessness, insolence. Okay. Lasciviousness. Okay, so it says it right there. Okay. And this is why what? If you're walking in the spirit, that's going to overcome what these things. Okay? Idolatry. Okay? Which you should know what that is. You're putting anything before the scripture says, you shall have no power before me. He that loveth mother, father, children more than me, he cannot be, not, he cannot be my disciple. Witchcraft. you doing spells, you're in tarot cards, you know, worshipping back home met. The androgynous demon, doing them silly thing, finger signs, okay, them, them peace finger signs, okay. Hatreds, hating your brother, variants, friction, emulations, you, you copying someone, you trying to be like him, you emulating him, okay. There's a lot of that going on as well. Why? Because you don't know yourself. That you, you got to know that's of the flesh. That's of the flesh, okay. People think, oh, well, I'm in the spirit. I didn't eat pork today. Okay. But what what, what else did, did not you do? What else? You see what I mean? You know? Quickly go into the word emulations. See if I can get that up. Oh, emulations. Envying, jealousy, fervent mind, excited of mind. The zeal, but it's, it's a wrong zeal. Envious of contentions, rivalry. So you have men with that spirit. And I've seen it so many times. What happens? The spirit gets taken off them. Because they don't want to shake it. They don't examine themselves. Wrath. Easily angry. Strife. Causing strife through pride. Sedition. Quarrelling. Heresies. Making up stuff. And opinion. You've even got men that have opinions. 
Oh, this is just how I feel. That's my opinion. That's all of your flesh. Envyings, murders, drunkenness. So envy, with envy comes every other sin. Murders, drunkenness, you're getting drunk. And when you come into this truth, I don't know, I may drink something later. I may. No certainty. But to get drunk, bro, we have a responsibility. How can you judge if you're drunk? Your brains all turn to mush like a sponge. Revelings. So are you the individual that's going to that was in this truth? You were going to clubs. That means your mind was never on your house shy. You going to clubs for? When when you got a study, you're partying. And what happens in clubs? Adultery. A whole lot of adultery. Drugs, all types of madness. And such like of which I tell you before, I have told you also, told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the most high. But the fruit of the spirit is love, peace, long suffering. Okay? And what gives you peace? This truth. Long suffering. Which I'm still um, working on as well. Okay? Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Not just barking at someone. Because you perceived that they've done something wrong. Meekness. Temperance, which is what? Balance. Discipline. Against such there is no law. Why? Because you're in the spirit. And they that are Mashiachs have crucified the flesh. Cut off the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit. Let us walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Which is of the flesh. Provoking one another. Envying one another. Okay. So the scriptures are telling you. They're telling us. How to be in the spirit. And I'm not, I'm not going to tell you personally what I do to be in the spirit because that's for you to figure out by yourself. But this is just a few things that I've read. Because every, every brother's got a different way of how they're in the spirit, how they're zoned in. Okay? And we're going to shut off on this because this is very interesting. This is John 8 and 23. And he said unto Rem, the Jews that were carnal. Okay? Bear me just a minute. Ye are from beneath, and I am from above, because they were carnal, they were base. These were base men, fleshly, sensual. I am from above, higher wavelength, spiritual, the Holy Spirit. You are of this world, if you're of this world, because you're carnal, you're thinking carnal, you're in the flesh. This world represents the flesh. I am not of this world. Jehoshua said, he's not of this world. He's of the spirit. This is this, this is this is this is a mindset of the elect. I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe that I am not, I am I am so lucky. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. So guess what? He was letting them know that although although they kept the law, they were gonna die in their sins because they didn't believe. So it's all starts with belief first. And when you believe in your house, is going to give you the faith. And with him giving you the faith, he's going to give you the faith to walk in the spirit. Therefore, guess what? The spirit's going to override the flesh. So most of the time, you're going to be in the spirit. These individuals, they weren't in the spirit. They were in the flesh and they were going to die in their sins. So you could be saying... Keep the law, keep the law. What do individuals did? What's the what's it what's it, what's um what's the um the end conclusion? A lot of them are bringing up what Ecclesiastes. What's it? Twelve and twelve. What's the end conclusion? Fear the most high and keep the law. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But if you fear the law, you fear the Lord because what? That's faith. Because it's not the law that's going to it's not the law that's going to save you. It's your faith in Yahweh Shai because again. These individuals that Yahweh said you're going to die in your sins, they were keeping the law. But one thing they did not have, <laughs> the law of faith. Okay? And faith, what? That has you walking in the spirit. If you don't have faith, you're not going to walk in the spirit. You're going to be walking in the flesh. So with this lesson, I would have shot off a Lord winning. This was edifying. And until the next time, Shalom to the hopeful elect. Shalom.